is really good video quality. I'm trying to bite the top of the head of the screw to be able to turn it since somebody else stripped it. And there we go. Got enough traction on it. Is that chrome tape? There's chrome tape and then electrical tape. There's all types of uh, layers of stuff that shouldn't be here. Great. And then they silicone the entire perimeter of it. Oh, so this is gonna be a fun windshield to take out. Yeah, the gasket's petrified. If you look in some spots, there are cracks in it where it shrunk, namely in the middle. These corners cracked out. That's why somebody siliconed it over there. So we have a gasket for him. I'm gonna have to go through. I think I gave up my last good gasket. But I should have a sedan gasket. Oh, it's different. Okay, that's yeah, right. Yeah, sedans are less uh, desirable. Yeah, they do work in coupes though. So just a slightly tighter. You have to either take the edge out of the top section of it to reduce the overall circumference of the gasket. So, but it's a last resort. You could use the sedan gasket and a coupe. And because there are variations in the coupes from the factory, one time I was actually able to use a sedan gasket without modification. Right now it's time to get this windshield trim off. It looks like it will be uh, stuck to a degree. This looks like bathtub white silicone on top or some type of gutter grade silicone. There's windshield silicone, chrome tape, electrical tape, and who knows what else in here in the door jam. This trim is dented, so if I destroy it, take it off, it's no big deal. I'm going to give him a nicer set of trim anyway. And because the surfaces were all dirty when they silicone, it looks like it's going to apart pretty easy. separate off the center piece. And then when we're done, we'll have like movie car trim. Yeah, this was a crush scene trim right here <laughs> on the sedan scene. Available for a very low fee. Whatever feels like letting go. This trim might have an interlock on it. Some have um, stainless tabs. Well, the whole thing is stainless. Some have tabs that kind of weave around the center section. Some do, some don't. This appears to be one that does have it. See, this, uh, this is bathtub silicone for sure. So, just release and come off of the uh, upper ledge here. Normally it would pop at this point, but again, it's pretty uh, well glued on. I'm not using the appropriate tools because once again, I don't care about this trim. But once this pillar trim releases, we should have a full free upper windshield set of trim. break the silicone tray. Here we have a clearer view of the way the stainless returns. We're holding the outer trim to the center piece. It folds over and there is a little stop. So this is uh, one of three designs of sedan trim that were used in 57s and 58s. The coupes have about seven styles of trim for hardtops and uh, 
for a hard tops. Uh, we could loop into that since they share the same windshield. But coupes themselves do have seven individual sets between 57 and 58. Wow. Some sedan info for you. Sedans matter too. <laughs> to release the lower windshield trim, you'll have to access three 3 8 nuts through the cowl screen area. These are usually overlooked, but must be removed to properly remove the lower stainless. This gasket was exceptionally pliable, and if you're lucky, you'll encounter one just as soft. To release it, you'll want to use a nylon tool or a blunt screwdriver to separate the inner and outer locking strips. Once the entire perimeter is unlocked, you can fold the glass edge lip inside itself, basically gasket inside uh, rear half, and at that point you could start working the glass out of the channel of the gasket itself. On this episode, we are going to remove this windshield, which has a, a bullseye and some crazing. Unfortunately, in this case, this uh, gasket will not be reusable. It is quite petrified and has several areas where it has cracked due to shrinking. So it's not pliable enough to unlock. I'm going to move forward with hopefully just uh, cutting through and shattering it out of the way to get this windshield out. So let's see how that's going to go. Collect all the chocolate. Usually you don't see this type of uh, petrification on a car that lived most of his life in uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. This is something you'd see out west. So this might have been a western car in its earlier days. That's a nice piece. molded silicone. I want to be sure we don't have any type of a physical connection once I try to flip this out and get it out of our way. should officially be free. Give that a little pop from inside. Connected. It looks like it's free. Yeah. I could probably just take this and swing it up and out. Now we can take a look at the windshield channel itself and see the condition. It looks pretty nice. We have original white paint. It looks like iceberg white. The lower section appears to be blue bonnet blue. It's actually a really nice uh, window channel. I wish all the coupes were this nice. We'll take a close up once I get the gasket out of the way. And uh, whoever had this car two owners prior to me 
did the quintessential uh, paint your dashboard with the windshield in and paint all the rubber with it. Take a look at the integrity of this window channel. As we see, that is actually shiny original paint. The entire perimeter. I have a little rust along there. That's just where uh, debris collected, but we have a rust-free channel. So the next step is gonna be to clean up the uh, mess of this gasket, which is now shrapnel do a thorough cleaning of the channel so there's no debris, no remnants of previous butyl seal or any type of uh, petroleum-based sealers. It'll get cleaned with wax and grease remover and the new gasket. Uh, there's no good new gaskets out there. There's no uh, suitable reproduction. So we'll be using an exemplary original that's been cleaned, prepared, and will be reinstalled with a good used sedan windshield quick uh, post cleanup overview. This was just after a simple wipe down. As we see, the assumptions of a very nice windshield lip were true. If anyone owns one of these cars and has had their windshield out, um, if you were this lucky, you were very lucky. Most folks unfortunately don't get to see uh, a channel in this condition. These areas would normally be laden with rust. So a little more prep, a little rust prevention, and it will be time to set the gasket in place and work the new windshield in. Unfortunately, after going through my gasket inventory, I really did let go of uh, any extras I had. Two um, I sold earlier this year, both went overseas. And uh, I might be stuck with having to utilize this uh, last resort, non-molded extrusions. This was uh, from Birnbaum years ago. I guess now it's Query selling it. Everybody that bought these ended up just uh, giving them away, but we'll see what we could do with it. It is a nice uh, product as far as design, but it's just not molded. It doesn't make the turns. Uh, you have to miter the corners and seal them. But if it could be made to work, I'll make it work. This is the first time I held this to a car. It's uh, it's on the verge of useless. The profile's wrong, the lip's too high. Even when mitering this, it's gonna look like absolute trash in that corner. No go on this uh, repop stuff, knew it was worthless. Today, we're gonna put the windshield in using a rejuvenated windshield gasket. I prepared this one a few years ago. You can see the rubber is literally like new as far as pliability, all the uh, Vulcanized corners are perfect. It locks and unlocks perfect. So this will be the specimen going in this car. Prepare it for layout, put the uh, label off, and set it in place. These could be a little tricky to set into the windshield lip without any type of butyl sealer. In this case, I'm gonna be setting it in more or less just for transport because the car will be taken back apart to be properly painted. Unlock it. 
it makes it easier to install. Almost done setting the gasket onto the windshield lip of the car. This gasket is such an excellent condition example. It's really grabbing well. A lot of times they end up uh, drooping down and you have to fight it to uh, stay up or even sometimes put a piece of tape on the uh, inside of the lip and tape it to the roof of the car to hold it in place without any sealer. <clears throat> I always use uh, my fingernails. You could also use a body tool like this to uh, now release the entire perimeter. By releasing that, you could push the lip inside the locking lip and give yourself room for the glass to set in place. And there we are, verified fully unlocked. Probably should have prepared a little better and had some more pieces of cardboard around. Just set one there, push it onto the windshield stud to hold itself in place. And another flap of cardboard I'll put on the other side over the windshield wiper stud. Just for a little place for the glass to touch down. line it into the gasket and then start the locking process.
here, I'm just bringing the lower lip out from under the glass and kind of just aiming the glass in as I go. And doing this fully dry. <clears throat> you could use some uh, dish soap or Windex as a lubricant. to its tightest point as you start to uh, approach the two engaged spots on the glass. Real close. And the windshield is in. And there you have the one man or one person windshield installation there. It's not too scary. If you're not a barbarian, you won't break the glass. I suggest everybody take their windshield out when painting a car. It just makes the job more appropriate and higher quality. And there you have it. Now I'll go around and start locking the strip in. Could always uh, position the windshield a little bit and make sure it is essentially centered in the rubber. And as you lock it in, I'll do a little spot there and then a little spot at the top and then work my way around. So I have top and bottom on the passenger side locked in and spaced. Now I'll do top and bottom on the driver's side. Just about four inches there. Start locking in at the top. A few inches there. Now see if it needs any fore or aft movement. You can rock the car with it. Again, you can almost lift the car from the glass, you won't hurt it. And then lock this side in because it seems pretty balanced. And then lock the passenger side. Now the end game is to lock the entire perimeter of the gasket. That could be pretty boring, so we'll pan back to the finished product. So the easiest way to lock it in is to take a nylon tool and just kind of follow it with your thumb. And if you look, that's fully engaged. I'll have him pan. Our son is taking the video since it's all uh, hands on deck here. Towards us, as I'm doing it, so you can follow my hand. Again, that's the insertion. I'll try and do this in an uncomfortable position for the sake of the video. Stand it up. And follow. And this part, you just push it at that point. You'll see the gap close completely once you know you're locked in. Here, you can follow this one probably as I go. Yeah, it's just more of an uncomfortable position, but we're just helping the rubber interlock. approach the part that I locked in previously and then we can start up again up here again you're just assisting the locking process and if you really get close you can see there is a step in the lip and that's what actually retains it in this video since it was only for transport purposes and the windshield was going to be taken back out for a proper restoration the gasket was put in dry on both the body channel side and glass side for a permanent installation after properly preparing the body by painting, epoxying, etc. The body side of the gasket, I usually take quarter inch butyl ribbon 
which is used to set glass in newer cars, stretch it slightly thinner to be the width of the gap of the metal side or body side of the windshield gasket or rear glass gasket. I set the butyl ribbon in the depth of the channel such that it both seals and holds the gasket in place to the body while you work the glass. Um, at that point, I do choose to put the glass in the gasket dry, but before locking it in, I use uh, pliable butyl setting caulk, much like the factory used butyl putty uh, in the glass channel. I choose that because it's a firm seal to the gasket while remaining flexible. And any type of flex that the gasket needs to take will be um, maintained between the body and the gasket itself to prevent any type of window cracking if the body were to flex extreme to extreme limits. So prior to locking the gasket in on the glass side, there would be a step of using butyl caulk or a high quality silicone uh, to seal the glass to the gasket. The factory seemed to even use something equivalent to clear coat on a few of the cars, whether that was factory or a common repair over the years that the dealerships did. Nothing's been verified, but that's something I did discover taking these gaskets out of probably close to 100 cars now. We hope you enjoyed Fury Jim's take on this window replacement. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe to support our Plymouth saving cause.